Hi guys, welcome to my living room. Thank you Hi. for coming. Thank you for Thanks having, having us. us. And uh, welcome back to another episode of Looking For. I'm Amelie, and today we are looking for allyship with my special guests, Jesse Sullivan and Devin Winkler. Jesse is a trans dad who creates content with his kid Arlo, and Devin is a beauty and lifestyle content creator. How are you doing today? I'm great. You're I've good? had a great day. What about you? I'm doing great. I just got back from camping for five days for my birthday. I so. just went camping for a festival. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, so we're both just getting out of it. Happy belated birthday. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> were you at Burning Man? I was at Base Canyon up in Washington. Mm. Did a last minute road trip. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you like go through all the like national yeah, parks? Yeah, it was <gasps> so beautiful. Oh, like wow. so, so beautiful. I want to go. So today on the show, we're going to get into two important topics, how to be an ally to friends discovering their identities, and how to support friends who are dating within the LGBTQIA plus community. This is a very important issue to our partners at Bumble, who have worked very hard to ensure everyone feels seen and represented on their app, a platform where people date and look for friends. Dating, no matter what your gender or identity, can be complicated enough. So today we are going to explore the ins and outs of each stage of dating within the LGBTQIA plus community and show how to be a supportive friend and ally during that process. So, are any of you in relationships at the moment? Yes, I am. I'm Aww. single currently. <laughs> single. <laughs> Tell me about your relationship. Um, I met my girlfriend like a little over a year ago. Okay. Um, we kind of like kept our relationship pretty like low-key on social media up until just recently so okay. actually like on my birthday on sunday was the first time she ever posted me on instagram Aww. so she was like now we're official yeah. <laughs> so um yeah but she's amazing and i'm 100 percent going to marry her Aww. Um, definitely the love of my life so <laughs> why did you guys keep it a secret for so long I think just like with like having we're both like content creators yeah. and, and she does reality tv like i think we just didn't want kind of that public backlash and there was like we did have some breaks and mm -hmm. so we were like actually really happy that we did keep it secret because if yeah. those breaks would have been public yeah. then people would have been it's like tricky. oh like you know yeah so people like really look into your relationship when you do that yeah, so. yeah for sure yeah. and you're single yeah are you I, looking for a relationship uh i think i'm good on a break yeah <laughs> from that at the yeah. moment i think i'm just gonna work on myself i was talking to somebody and it just wasn't the right time yeah and i think i just need those to. are the best i think that's great times, yeah like, yeah like, see those single years like that i had like made me who i am now yeah you know? i'm excited yeah I'm, i don't regret yeah. it <laughs> yeah like, that, like i'm so. thriving yeah. <laughs> i love that i love the single life it's a good time to explore and dive deep within to become yeah. a better you <laughs> truly so how how did how did your journey start and like how did you get to where you are today i mean when i i always tell people like i came out twice i had to first come out as a lesbian and then come out as a trans man um so it's interesting when like a lot of trans men and actually women will actually talk about this process because you go from being like gay and everyone sees you as gay to all of a sudden like uh, you're a passing cis like you people think you're cis mm -hmm. and you're straight so yeah. that was like pretty interesting for me almost it was like hard for me to let go of like the gay thing because yeah. i actually like loved that about myself but um i do still consider myself just queer yeah. in general because i am like a trans person and i also am like I, i've only dated women but like if i ever did happen to meet a guy that like i felt something for i would not never stop myself yeah. like i'm so open so yeah and how did you like first realize that you were before you transitioned how did you first realize you were a lesbian or like not I, yeah. how but like when did you realize i just knew my whole life like yeah. i remember when i was really little i didn't have crushes on boys i had crushes yeah. on girls like as young as four yeah i remember in kindergarten having crushes on classmates that were girls yeah. and so it was like something i always knew and i was just raised so conservative catholic mm, homeschooled um so it was definitely not, not something i could say out loud my mom did sit me down when i was about 13 and was like are you gay mm. and i was like no what are you talking about <laughs> I was like, like really like adamantly like, no, why would you think that, you know, because I was so scared. Yeah. Um, and then I came out once I was older. So it was kind of this that whole process of feeling comfortable enough to even say it. Yeah. Does your family support you now? Um, they it's interesting because when I came out as gay, they were way more supportive than they are once I came out as trans. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, I had a family member say, 
you know, it's fine that you're gay, just don't be trans mm. when I came out as gay. So I knew when I did this, it was not going to go over well. Did I think it was going to split my family apart? No, oh. that's pretty much the phase it's at now. Um, I do think there's healing in the future. I do see it. I don't yeah. think it's permanent. I think people are going to start slowly accepting it, but it definitely has not been I'm sorry to hear that. easy at all. I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I've kind Healing of come to terms happen. with it. Yeah. <laughs> if you have optimism, then I have optimism. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm a very much like I. Things don't really get to me as long as I'm happy and yeah. secure in myself, and I have great friends and a great girlfriend and an amazing kid. So, yeah. it doesn't really bother me that much. <laughs> good, good. I'm happy to hear that. And what about you? What was your What's your journey been like? Um, I came out as bi mm -hmm. in the beginning, and. I think once I came out, it just opened like a lot of doors. I yeah. think everyone finds themselves in such like a later point in time, like just when you're going on your own and you're discovering what you want to do and what makes you happy and what makes you feel most comfortable with yourself. Mm -hmm. It's just like when you're on your own, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but then I like, I like re came out as unlabeled because like I just didn't really resonate mm -hmm. with that type of box yeah. that it would put me in. And I just, have been vibing out with it ever since. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you did you do that too? Because like, you're you feel like you might like change something you said initially. Is it like? Yeah, I I said unlabeled because I don't want to put myself in a box of where if I was loving a woman mm -hmm. and she came out as transgender mm -hmm. and wanted to you know like that's how he had felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be like. Oh, I'm a lesbian. I'm yeah, a lesbian, yeah. so like I can't be with you. Like it's yeah. not like that. So I just mm -hmm. go by and labeled and let yeah. yeah let it roll. I think that's smart. I like that. Yeah. Lot. So given the fact that like sexual identity and gender identity can shift so often in in your life, how do you support friends or loved ones through a process where they're like just starting to figure out their identity? I think my friend had just recently came out as they them, and they were so worried about like if I would like judge them or not mm -hmm. or like I think you just have to you just have to be there for them with open arms like yeah. nobody really understands the process of everything of how they're feeling and like what they're going through everyone has personal experiences that yeah. we aren't always going to relate to so mm -hmm. just being there with open arms and trying to understand where they're coming from I think is super important yeah, yeah. 100% I my kid has taught me a lot about this because I was obviously raised in a different gener generation where like coming out was a big thing. Hiding your sexuality mm -hmm. was a big thing. And my kid just turned 14 and they haven't been raised that way. And one thing they always say is like, especially about allyship is make it not a big deal. Yeah. Be loving and supportive, but it doesn't have to be, they always are like, you know, be like, that's great. I'm happy for you. Yeah. And then move on because yeah. then that makes the person feel more comfortable to maybe later on after they have come out as they, them and they, do want to start identifying as he him yeah they're not gonna be like oh my god that giant emotional thing that happened with all my friends right. and family and now i have to do this again to them because i know too as like queer people a lot of times we feel like a burden for the people around us and so i think the more you can kind of just make it like this is a beautiful great e easy thing mm -hmm. and we move on and i'm glad you're happy i think that's the best way to handle yeah, it. yeah i've always found it so interesting that like we as a society have made coming out as like this huge yeah. thing when it's really just like a natural part of existence right. like that's i've always just been so dumbfounded by that yeah, whole concept so is my kid like they talk about this almost daily it drives them crazy yeah like, why can't it just be like anything Abnormal. else yeah you know? like and i think the one thing i do say though is i think that in life in general to get from like things in a really bad place to things in a really great place it's very like this it's never this really easy straight line and i think sometimes you we have to go through these parts like our older generation like millennials are more had to like come out and stuff and i think yeah. by like the gen z's and even the next ones yeah. it's not gonna be yeah. like that but it had to take those processes to get there for sure so how do you guys like quantify or how do you define gender versus identity i think like i think a lot of people mix up these things because um you know it's like lgbtqia plus now and in fact like there's even a lot of people that want to get like transgender out of that because it's t being transgender is your gender identity it's how you express your gender to the world versus your sexuality which is who you fall in love with who you mm -hmm. like who you're attracted to um 
But I personally think because of like the intersection of all of these things that Mm -hmm. it all really does fall under the same umbrella. So I do think obviously there's distinct differences. Like obviously I am transgender. That's how I identify, but my sexuality is straight. Mm -hmm. So there is differences, but I do think like overall we do all uh, fall under the same umbrella yeah how do you feel about yeah. that yeah i i think that sexuality is like such a fluctuation mm-hmm. that like it's just it's just two separate things yeah. mm-hmm. so why do you think people confuse or contend between the two gender versus sexuality I think that's like a societal thing where it was like you're back in the day you'd get called a queer like no matter what like if Mm -hmm. you were gay or bi or anything and I think when like people started identifying differently with their gender they started just putting it all in the same like oh you're a queer like Mm -hmm. you're doing this different thing and you're you're under that like LGBTQIA plus like umbrella and I think some people just box it all together in in a way to really insult you but I do think it's obviously like like I said, like there is very distinct differences. Mm. Yeah. I honestly didn't ideas? know that people like grouped that stuff together. So this is just yeah. like really interesting <laughs> to hear about. I was just like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Because if you think about it, like back in the day, let's say like a man was transitioning to a woman, like uh, someone who was hateful would obviously be like, oh, you're a F slur, mm. like you're a queer, like in a negative way. But really that was just that person's gender identity. Mm. They're not homosexual. Right, a lot, most right. of the time they're in fact straight. But it's that it right. just they, that's how they, they would see you as almost like like turning on your gender, you mm. know? Okay. Like, I think that brings up a really interesting point, especially when it comes to like getting into relationships and feeling the need to like define yourself or figure out what your identity is. When you're on a dating app like Bumble, it's really easy where you can actually like choose to identify from a very wide range of identities, and they actually partnered with Glad to make sure the list was as inclusive as possible, which. I feel like I haven't heard from any other dating apps. Yeah, like, that's amazing. Have you guys been on any sort of like dating apps and experienced the kind of box of like, I don't really know what to yeah, pick? Yeah, definitely. Not on dating apps personally, but on other things. Yeah. yeah. There's just not a very wide variety yeah. of things. Yeah. Before meeting my girlfriend, I was on dating apps. I met my previous girlfriend on dating apps. And yeah, it was like... I think pretty much gay or straight. Like, I don't even remember anything in in regard to gender identity Mm. being on there. Um, And then when I started transitioning, I would actually put that just in my, like, bio or whatever it was because I felt uncomfortable, like, being, like, if there was someone out there that was, like, transphobic or homophobic, Mm. like, meeting me thinking I'm cis. Mm. And then once I was in person with them, finding that out and then wanting to, like, hurt me or something. So I do think it's, like, so important to have that on a date. I think, yeah, as, like, a safety precaution. Like you said, like taking the risk of meeting someone is already vulnerable enough but then like throw in the mix of like possible homophobia or transphobia like Mm -hmm. that is a safety precaution that i think is so important so i mean kind of touching back to what i said about like coming out as a public figure do you guys think there is a difference in the way that society treats men coming out rather than women especially when it comes to ideas like fetishization I think it can be really gross for women. I also think it's really, really hard for men to be able to come out about anything. I think that there's just a very toxic environment and a majority of men that it's like not a comfortable spot for women or man. Mm. Like no one can really live up to their expectations mm. of the toxicity that they're in. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Did you Have you ever like experienced that, terp- that type of fetishization online? Yeah, it's really gross. It's really gross. Yeah. It's just... It, makes you really uncomfortable and I've experienced it on both sides of where like it's men fetishizing fetishizing me with like other girls or girls wanting to do like stuff for for other male guys. pleasure and it's just like it's gross yeah it's that really is gross. gross it's also like taking advantage of exactly. who you are yeah. Exactly. yeah and your vulnerability yeah because like I like I said, I came out first as lesbian and it was, there was so much more gross stuff then. Like now, Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't actually don't really get much of that as like a trans man at all, but I could see how like a gay man coming out as gay would also get like a lot of hate, but I don't think it would be the same like sexualizing that Mm -hmm. like women get because it was like, like men be like, Oh yeah, kiss your girlfriend. Like that's so hot. I'd be like, Oh, you know, like that's terrible. That is very Um, uncomfortable. But I also like a lot of this goes back to, I remember learning this in college that um, like the reason 
men are so hard on gay men isn't even necessarily because they're attracted to another man it's because they're feminine mm -hmm. and so it all actually goes back to misogyny in the yeah. end yeah because it's really like a hatred of women it's like a man acting like a woman how dare you yeah and it's like a woman acting like a woman how dare you like everything goes back to like hating women wow and that's like really at the core of all of these things we're talking about in terms of dating apps and especially on an app like bumble when you do experience getting fetishized or you receive some uncomfortable a comment that makes you uncomfortable bumble has fantastic policies where you can like block or report um whoever made that comment and you don't have to ever deal with that again in the past like year i would say there's been hundreds of anti-trans bills being introduced across the country have you like been clued in on that like I, I genuinely feel the internet is not talking about this mm -hmm. um and I tried to bring it up once and the internet went like feral over me oh, wow. like it was just I make a lot of political videos online and um this one was truly like an unhinged amount of hate I received on that video for people being like why why are you trying to like wrong the rights that are being made in terms of like introducing and passing these trans bills Jesus. it was really really scary like have you been clocked yeah. clocking any I mean, of that i follow like all the instagram accounts that update yeah. this stuff all the time because obviously like as an individual it's really hard to keep up on it and that's how i find everything out and they are always on it and i'm always reposting and trying yeah. to get people to talk about it yeah obviously my account's probably a little different than yours because yeah. a lot of the people following me are like following me because i'm trans so mm -hmm. they support it more but um I, i've always said like what you're saying makes sense because i've always said like it was being able to experience both coming out as gay and coming out as trans like how much more hate i've gotten mm. is like astronomical like really? it's so so much more and the way it affects people is so much deeper yeah people ask me this all the time why do i think that is i really can't say 100 percent for sure but i do think it has to do with something that like gender we're taught so young pretty much in utero that gender is so like important to who you are it's mm -hmm. who you are yeah and so when you try to like like unravel what people have taught there it's like taking something that they feel so mm -hmm. dear dear to them mm. um but it's and then on top of that it's also that like i think a trans person being brave enough to like be out in the world and be openly trans like trigger something it triggers misogyny in a yeah. lot of people and i think they're almost like project the fact like how are you so brave to do mm. that when i can't even like do like the smallest mm. thing so, yeah but you're it's right it's scary. crazy that it is a, even a controversial yeah issue. It's, we're talking about human rights here like yeah. especially a lot of these are to do with children yes. playing sports yes or using bathrooms which is like just absolutely yeah it's, it's i mean there was one just recently passed in texas and it was just like overarchingly like about gay rights mm. and transgender individuals were like included in that package and it literally stems down to kindergarten that's at insane. the kindergarten level that's where like the miseducation of like being gay is wrong begins yeah which like when you're in kindergarten you're like barely an evolved human yeah, in the slightest it's exactly. so sad and it like just teaches deep self-hatred that will take years to like yep. heal that we have to undo all that as yeah. we get to an adult yeah yeah it's horrible yeah so i know you're single right now and like mm -hmm. enjoying the single life and mm -hmm. not really wanting to date but should you go out on a date how or when do you feel like it's appropriate to tell people where you at where you're at with your sexual identity um i don't think my sexuality i'm pretty open with my sexuality yeah. like i'm very open with the concept that i have around it i think if i think about it too much it stresses me out mm -hmm. so saying that i'm unlabeled like people can obviously form their own opinions about that and go yeah. in which way they want but if it's somebody that i'm wanting to go out with mm -hmm. they can sit down and like try to understand me a little bit yeah. more in that type of sense you know yeah, what i mean for so. sure and like when it comes to dating what makes you feel comfortable when you're having these conversations just think like an open mind yeah like a lot of times in like this community if you're like saying that like you're bi or something or you like men it'll go back to like mm. they they might like look down upon mm. you or something like yeah. that but i really it doesn't need to be like that like yeah. it's really like me saying who i like or who 
I'm going to fall in love with. Yeah. It doesn't have anything to do with who I am. Yeah. Like, as, like, my personality yeah. is just who I love. Type yeah. Type. yeah. It doesn't change me. Type B, so. Yeah. If you were to be, like, in an existing relationship and you decide that your current, like, sexual identity doesn't really fit you anymore, like, you've grown out of that or you've realized that you're different um, than what you already, like, identified yourself as, how do you feel people are able to do that in like a way that feels comfortable and natural and without like risk of losing their partner or I think I mean the reality is like we all change a lot especially as we get older like if you came out young like your sexuality or gender identity might change a bunch of times as you get older it might not but um the reality is like with your partner you might have to accept that they're they are not comfortable Mm -hmm. with it that that happened to me when I was gay um I came out to my girlfriend at that time as trans she was like one of the first person I kind of started like dropping hints I was like yeah I think I might start testosterone and she flat out was like I'm a lesbian I don't want to be with a man and I was like that's okay Mm. so you know I think you do kind of have to it, there is a risk in losing that person because you don't want someone staying with you even if they aren't comfortable. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, as long as you're being true to who you are who you are and how you identify, it's going to work out in the end. You're then yeah. going to find someone who does fit you and who is attracted to that or, or maybe, like, like, for instance, my girlfriend is pansexual. Mm. So for her, it's just like she doesn't really care. Yeah. She's like, just sees the soul and the yeah. person and the personality, which I yeah. love. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I think it's about you are probably going to change a lot and you have to kind of be okay with that. And I think Mm -hmm. that's a beautiful part about being a person. Like in all things in our life, we change a lot. So with sexuality and gender and everything, that's probably going to be part of it. Yeah, for sure. So what does allyship look like to you guys? Um, I think I think allyship is just kind of always checking in on your friends and seeing like how they're doing first off, first off mentally, you know, and seeing like what you can do for them, seeing how you can support them mm-hmm. in their journey. Because like he said, like your journey is always gonna change. Like yeah. it's always, it's not just gonna be some straight line of like, yes, I'm I'm gonna do this. I know like it's, yeah. it's a whole up and down thing it's that you're gonna go through. Yeah. So just being able to understand that and being able to say, what can I do to help? What can yeah. I do to make you feel more comfortable is really important, I feel like. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think, Like, I would love to say, and I I said this when I was younger, that allyship is just, like, showing love for the people who are LGBTQIA in your life. But because of, like, all the the hate, like, legislation and the things we're seeing happen in the world just on an individual level, like, people harming themselves, harming each other over this, I think it goes so much more beyond that. I do think it is, like, checking in on your friends and and checking in where they're at and all of that, but also supporting these causes yeah. and like you said yeah. like even people with like platforms posting and getting yeah. people because they're a lot of people be like oh like you're an influencer all you do is post it's like you that actually does a lot like it does it, i've seen people like read an instagram story and be like i didn't know that was happening now i know now i want to do something about yeah. it so i think like more people knowing that there literally is laws against children right now and yeah. against people um in the military and everywhere like i think that's super important when it comes to allyship. Yeah, I think just like education itself is so important mm-hmm. because I know like especially when the conversation comes around like the military or like sports, people just preach with such uninformed yes. opinions. Yeah. And education is really at the root of all of this. Like I genuinely feel if everyone was educated correctly Mm -hmm. so many of these issues would not even be real like they would not exist i 100 percent agree especially because like when i came out as trans so many people that i thought were like pretty progressive didn't even understand it they were like i don't get this there's only two genders what what are you talking about like and there were people who were like you know i thought understood these things and i realized how many people don't even understand the difference of gender and like your biological sex yeah you know so even maybe explaining that to like big mass groups of people might like change something in their head if they're like oh you know your chromosomes are different than how you identify oh okay yeah you know (laughs) yeah is there any piece of information to like someone young out there who might be trying to figure out their identity or someone who knows that they're like straight and something you want them to understand to be more a little like open-minded and kind towards people figuring their identities out one thing that I really wanted to talk about because I had a discussion 
with someone a little while ago because they were just like not open they were from they aren't from like this generation Mm. and they were just like constantly repeating over to me like over and over that like they just didn't understand like the they them Mm. like situation of like when people change their pronouns to that because like it's plural or whatnot and they were just like saying all this stuff to me and I just think that it's so important to like get out there that like you're not gonna understand every thing that somebody's going through yeah like you're just not gonna understand that but like just being able to respect that Mm. like the basic respect yeah is so important yeah Yeah. so important yeah it's so true because like there might be like i could talk to someone with a complete different life than me and not understand what they're going through what they're saying but i would be so respectful and i would instantly say whatever they wanted me to say or call them whatever they wanted me to call them and i think it's that simple I think it people is. overcomplicate it a lot. Like, my kid is they, them, and oh my God, what we deal with from, like, family and, and just other people, like, they're just like, I don't get what you're doing. Like, you're forcing this on your kid. I was like, I like, never once said that this, they yeah, decided this on their own, yeah. and, you know, it's so simple. I messed up in the beginning a little bit just because, you know, at that point, 12, 13 years of saying she, and then it took me, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks, and then yeah. just and then it was normal. in my head, and yeah. now I never mess up, you know? Yeah, <laughs> But yeah, like young people out there, like something I really want them to know is that like, especially with dating and everything, like they're going to have so many different phases and there's going to be some ups and some downs. But something I say to everyone, um, I've said it on my show is I understand you and you're not alone. Yeah. And there's people out there that know exactly what you're feeling. Find them on the Internet. Find them somewhere because there's there's people that support and love you. Yeah. 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 That's really nice. Well, thank you guys so much for coming and thank you. Thank being you open us. and vulnerable and talking about the things that matter to you. Thank this you so much. Fun. This is fun. Yeah, I'm <laughs> glad. So I'm glad. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Looking For. I'm Amelie Zilber, and I'll be back next week with another episode brought to you by Bumble right here on the Past Your Bedtime YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah.